Pre-Calc students, welcome back. We're on section 1.6, polynomial functions and end behavior. This isn't too tricky here. Basically, end behavior is we're going to look at a function and you tell me what happens all the way to the right and all the way to the left with that function. You'll notice that polynomial functions, they never go constant. They're not just going to lay flat. They're either going to go up or they're going to go down. Let's use this example here of a polynomial function. If I go to the left, a very far distance, then looking at this specific function that we'll call p of x, I realize by looking at it that it's going to go down. And the further left I go, the further down this function is going to go. So if I go to like negative a thousand, it's going to be pretty low. And if I go to negative a million, even lower, right? But then I can look at the other side of this, the right hand side and say, well, as x increases, this is getting higher and higher. The values are increasing. So if I go out to a thousand, it's going to be pretty high. If I go out to a million, even higher. So end behavior is describing what happens to the polynomial function in the very far left side of it and the very far right side of it. Now we do have some notation that we need to learn. So we're going to use the word limit and we, we write the limit as x goes to negative infinity. And I'll explain what that means here in a second. Essentially, it means what is happening to this function as x goes towards negative infinity or as x goes left. Here's our x-axis. We know that the negatives are over here and the positives are over here. As x goes towards negative infinity, as we go to the left, what happens to the function p of x? That's the notation we're going to use to describe the left-hand side of any polynomial function or any function for that matter. Now the right hand side, we're going to use the limit notation again. So the limit as x approaches, what do you think? Instead of going left where it's negative, we're going right where it's positive. So the limit as x approaches positive infinity, that means as we go to the right, as the x axis goes towards positive infinity, what happens to the function p of x, okay? In the specific example that I drew, this goes to negative infinity, it goes down forever. So I would say this all equals negative infinity, but on the right, it goes up forever. So we'd say it equals positive infinity, but that's just the one example that I drew. As X approaches negative infinity or positive infinity, do the Y values get larger or smaller? That's essentially what we're talking about. The following chart is how we describe the end behavior with fancy mathematical notation. Okay, so now let's play pretend and we'll see what happens or how we would describe, let's play pretend. Suppose I have a function here and on the left-hand side it goes up, which means you know, what, what happens in the middle and on the right-hand side, I'm not really focused at, I'm focused what happens on the left-hand side, which means as I go to the left here and as the X goes this way, maybe the function goes up like this. That could be a lot of functions that we know, but how would we describe it using our fancy, as I said, fancy mathematical notation? We would write the limit so LIM, as X approaches negative infinity, okay? That means as you go left down the X axis for the function P of X, now if it goes up, then we would say that the limit equals infinity. It's gonna go up forever and the Y value is eventually going to be infinity. That's what happens if on the left, it's increasing as you go to the left. Now let's play pretend in a different situation. Pretend this function here actually eventually starts to go down. I need to get my, my pen back here, but maybe it goes down like this. And that's what the function does, okay? Well, that means as I go to the left, this function is going down, down, down. The way that I would write that is the limit as x approaches negative infinity, none of that changes of the function p of x. But here's where we change it. Instead of going up like the, the like we had in the last example, suppose the function goes down, we would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of p of x equals negative infinity. Okay, so this, this is basically, these are the two ways that you can describe the left side end behavior for a polynomial function. It's either one or the other. And the left side, notice, it's always as x goes to negative infinity. So that's never gonna change. You just need to figure out whether it's gonna go up as you go to the left, that's the first option, or whether it goes down. Okay, now let's talk about the right-hand side 
of the polynomial function. Let's pretend like it goes up. So maybe this polynomial function, you know, has a couple swerves and then it eventually, as you go to the right, this function is increasing, increasing, increasing. We would write that using our fancy notation as the limit as x approaches positive infinity, which means as we go to the right of p of x is going to equal what? If this is increasing, 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 the y value will eventually get to positive infinity. All right? Now, last time, I think you know what's coming, right? I think you know what's coming up. Suppose as we go to the right, the function starts to decrease and it goes down forever. So as you go to the right, the function's decreasing, decreasing. We would write that with notation as the limit as x approaches infinity, which means as we go to the right on the x-axis of the function p of x is going to equal, if it goes down and down and down and down, then it would equal negative infinity. That's eventually where the y value would get. So some things to point out real quick. If you're going left, x is going to negative infinity. Either way, if you go up, it's infinity. If you go up, it's infinity. If you go to the right, x is approaching infinity. Okay, these are x values, and these are y values over here. Woo, that's our fancy notation. So now let's actually do this in practice here. We got example number one. Here's our function. All right, so I'm just gonna start off. The limit, it says use the graph shown to the right. Describe its end behavior using limit notation. So as x goes to negative infinity. I always like to start out with a negative infinity. We're going to the left. What happens to this function? So as I go more lefter, don't, don't judge that, but as I go more to the left, this function is going further down and down and down. It's eventually going all the way down. So I would say this is the function f of x. The limit as x approaches negative infinity for f of x is, say what? Negative infinity, right? Because it's going down forever, forever, forever. Now what happens on the right-hand side? The right-hand side, we'd say the limit as x approaches positive infinity, because that means the x-axis is going to the right. This one again is going down forever. So we'd say f of x, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x would equal negative infinity. Notice it's the same for both because it's going down on both sides. Now, number two says, using the axis to the right, draw an example of a polynomial function that matches the following. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity, that means as we go to the left, uh, it's positive here, positive infinity. So it's going up. So that means as I go to the left, it has to go up. So I don't know. Let's just draw some polynomial function. All right. As we go to the left, this function is going up. And as we go to the right, the function is going to negative infinity. So maybe we come up, just kidding, going all the way down there to negative infinity. And that is an example of a very shaky polynomial function that goes, as you go to the left, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of p of x is infinity because it's going up forever. The y value will eventually be infinity. And as you go to the right, as x approaches infinity, which means as you go down the x-axis to infinity, the function value will eventually hit negative infinity because it's going down forever. That's easy enough, right? That's end behavior. Now here's the best part about end behavior. It's not even looking at the graph. It's just looking at the equation. You really don't need to know very much of the equation at all. You don't need to know, uh, see, we don't need the graph. We just need to recognize the leading term. There we go, that's what I'm trying to get out of my mouth. The leading term contains the variable with the largest exponent. So as you remember from way back in the earlier lesson, if we put this polynomial in standard form, I really just care about this one right here. That first term. It's got the largest uh, exponent, and that really drives what the function does. Whatever term has the largest exponent, that's eventually what's going to dominate that whole equation. You don't need to worry about all this other stuff. So here's a little rule that, that happens that makes it easy to remember. If the leading term has an even degree, like this one has a 6, then the left and the right side will be the same. The end behavior will be exactly the same. Well, how do we know which way it goes, right? It's so easy. So if the degree is even, they go the same. You look at the leading coefficient. So here, uh, it's a 7 for p of x. That's positive. So the end behavior for an even degreed function is the same. And if it's positive, the leading coefficient, then it's going to go up to infinity. Here's an example. p of x equals x squared. This is a very simple example. You all know that one. It looks like a u, right? Okay, so the end behavior, it goes up and it goes up. And when the leading coefficient is positive, 
then we know that both of them match, okay? And they both go up. Whereas P of X equals negative X squared, that looks like this, right? So what's the end behavior? The end behavior would be the limit as X approaches negative infinity. So as you go to the left, this function is going down. So we say the limit as X approaches negative infinity of P to the X equals negative infinity. And as you go to the right, it goes down as well. So that limit also equals negative infinity. So I'm just going to, I'm gonna summarize this real easy for you. If it's even, they're the same. Positive is up, infinity, infinity. Negative is down, negative, negative, infinity. All right, so that's the end behavior for even degree polynomials. Let's look at odd, because odd is odd. If the leading term has an odd degree, the left and right side will be opposite. They will behave opposite of each other. You can think of it as odd. Odd is different, right? That's different. Okay, so the left and the right-hand side will be opposite. So how do you know which way it goes if they're odd? Because they are different from each other. I always like to think of uh, the very simple equation, x cubed, right? That kind of looks like this, right? We all learned that in algebra two. So if I were to put that on a graph like this, I'd do my best. And as you go to the left, so the limit as x approaches negative infinity, Okay, now this positive in front, as I go to the left, this goes down, right? So I'd say the limit of P of X equals negative infinity. But because this is odd degree, because the exponent is odd, that means that the left and the right hand side are opposite. So I don't need to look at anything else as long as I get that first one right. I can say the limit as X approaches positive infinity, which means as I go to the right, this function is going to increase. So I'll say the limit of P of X is going to equal positive infinity. Notice how they don't match, they're opposites. And that happens whenever the polynomial, the leading term has an odd degree. Remember, we only have to look at the leading term. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out what would happen here if we have an odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. So the example we have is like negative x cubed. We know that that kind of looks like this. Hopefully you know that. Kind of goes here and goes here and goes down. It's pretty close, right? So the limit as x approaches negative infinity, notice how that's always gonna be the same. As I go left, this function is going up. So the limit of p of x equals positive infinity. Whereas if I go to the right, the function is going down. So we'd say the limit as x approaches positive infinity of p of x is negative infinity because it is going down the whole time. So to summarize odd, okay, odd means they're different. If it's positive in front, then as you go to the right, that's the way Mario likes to run, right? He goes to the right, it should increase. That's what happens if you have a positive uh, leading coefficient here. But if the leading coefficient is negative, then it's going to go down eventually forever and ever. Let's describe the end behavior of each polynomial function using limit notation. So here we go, Getting this is where it, this is where it all, you know, we're gonna put it all out there. So I'm gonna first find the leading term here. Which of these terms is the leading term? And it's in standard notation here, standard form. So I'm just going to look right here. That is the only, I don't even care about those. This is the only one I got to look at. Now it's odd. The exponent is odd. The degree is odd. So I know that the end behavior is different. Furthermore, the leading coefficient is negative. So I know as I go, the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Sometimes it might help to draw a little picture over here. This is negative x cubed. As I go to the left, this is actually, and let's figure out why this is. As I go to the left, these are negative numbers. I'm gonna raise it to the third power. That's gonna give me a negative number. And then there's one more negative that makes it positive. That's why this thing kind of grows up forever, right? Whereas as I go to the right, oh, let's actually write this. As I go to the left, that function is gonna go up forever. So that it, it goes to positive infinity. But as I go to the right, the limit as x approaches infinity, which means as I go to the right down the x-axis, let's plug in like a very big positive number here. Okay, positive to the third power is positive, And then I make it negative with that leading coefficient. That's why this function eventually is going to go down. And that leading that leading term of this whole polynomial really drives the whole function. It is more powerful because that exponent is higher than the rest of these terms. These, these other parts, they make the little curves and bends in it, but in the end, this function is going to go down to negative infinity because that leading coefficient is negative. 
All right, why don't you try the next two, pause the video, try the next two by yourself and we'll see how you do. Okay, let's see how you did. I wrote everything out but the answer. I'm trying to keep you in suspense. This is uh, degrees, right? And the leading coefficient, LC. Leading coefficient is positive. So I know it kind of behaves like uh, x to the third, right? So it's low on the left and it's high on the right. So as I go left, it goes to negative infinity. But as I go to the right, it goes to positive infinity. Okay, easy enough. Now, with number five, we have the degree here is even. So as you recall, that means they're the same. So I'm gonna get the same answer here. This is negative. So I know that when it's negative, the leading coefficient, it goes down on both sides. And that's it. That's all we got. What, Mr. Kelly's all done? That's it. This is 1.6 polynomial functions and end behavior. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. Good luck on that mastery check. See you.